Does your coffee taste bad? Well, a good coffee grinder can help to correct that, and we're going to show you one here today on FrenchPressCoffee.com. Hey everyone, I'm Brian with FrenchPressCoffee.com. Thanks for tuning in here today. Now this is going to be a little bit of a long video, so I want to ask you guys to stick around with us until the very end because we're going to cover a lot of features about the coffee grinder I'm talking about today and give you a review and lots of information, so stick around because I guarantee this is going to be worth your time. The coffee grinder that I'm talking about today is the Barazza Virtuoso Plus. Now, Barazza has discontinued the Virtuoso, and we've talked about that one here uh, previously on FrenchPressCoffee.com, but we're going to show you this brand new Virtuoso Plus today. The first thing I'm going to mention in the Barazza Virtuoso Plus is the burrs. Now, these are 40 millimeter conical burrs, and uh, the important thing about these is that because these are very specific burrs, they're going to be able to grind very, very evenly. And as I was saying in the beginning of this video, if your coffee doesn't taste good and you're grinding your own coffee, one of the reasons that you're probably getting pretty inconsistent or not so great tasting coffee is just very simply because you don't have a good consistent grind. There's other factors that come into play, but if you don't have a consistent grind, that immediately is going to nullify a lot of the other work that you're doing. And that can turn even great coffee beans into just not so great coffee when you come right down to it. So these 40 millimeter conical burrs are going to be kind of your first gateway to really good coffee with the Virtuoso Plus. The next and one of the most important parts about the Virtuoso Plus is going to be the gearbox, which uses a direct drive gear reduction system. And that's kind of a fancy way of saying that what this device is going to do is shift the power that it needs from the motor, the DC motor that's in the device, to the gearbox and therefore the burrs in order to make sure that you get a good consistent grind. This is also going to make sure that it doesn't overheat because when you have those gears and uh, shifting around, which of course it's kind of like the transmission from a car, it's got to take the power from the motor and adjust in order to make sure that it's grinding smoothly. You want to make sure that it's doing that and you also want to make sure it doesn't overheat. So this is going to make sure that it doesn't overheat because Barazza does point out that this device is typically going to be used of course for grinding in sort of smaller pulses. This is not the type of grinder you would use in a retail store where you grind a whole bag of coffee. You're going to do this to grind for 15 seconds, 20 seconds, whatever it may be and then move on. So this is going to make sure that it doesn't overheat while you're in the process. Next thing that's worth mentioning, you can't see it, but you'll hear it when we grind, is the motor. It's a high torque DC motor. It turns slowly, which is going to ensure that the device is not going to be extra loud, but it's also got a thermal control switch in it, which just like the gearbox, as I was talking about earlier, it's going to make sure that it kind of load balances itself and it doesn't overheat and burn itself out real quickly. So it's going to be consistent. It's also going to keep itself cool and it's hopefully going to be pretty quiet. Uh, I have turned this one on before and I can tell you it sounded pretty quiet. I'd be interested to see what it does when we grind with it, but that motor is going to be pretty important. Again, I can't show it to you because it's inside, but you'll be able to hear it when we start grinding. Next up, and of course one of the most important things about this grinder is going to be the bean hopper and how you adjust for the grind type that you're going to use on the device. So if we look on the front of the unit here, I have this range, 40 different ranges of grind uh, levels that I can make use of on the grinder. And it starts at zero on my right and goes up to 40 on my left. So what this is going to allow me to do is by turning the bean hopper and paying attention to that white line right here, I can start at zero or go all the way over to 40. And this is going to allow me to grind from anywhere from 200 to 1400 microns. This is really important because this allows me to grind either very, very fine for espresso or even cupping grind. So if you want to get real, real specific on your grind, you can get very low. 200 microns is quite efficient. And then you can move all the way up to the 1400, which is where, of course, you're going to be utilizing that coffee for what we like to do here on FrenchPressCoffee.com, which is French press. So it's really easy to make that selection. Just simply turn the bean hopper. It's nice and clicky. It's going to stick. Once you get to the point that you want to go to, you're going to start the grind process, which of course we'll talk in a moment, but it feels really smooth and it doesn't feel like this is going to shift on me at any given time. It doesn't feel like it's going to start sliding either way or anything. So it feels really nice and you can make that selection and then boom, just dive into grinding. And I should mention that Barazza uh, tells us on the spec sheet for the Virtuoso Plus that it grinds at about 1.5 to 2.4 grams a second. So using a little bit of math, this would allow you to kind of figure out how long it's going to take you to grind a certain number of grams of coffee. So and let's say if you wanted to do 30 to 40 grams of coffee, you're probably looking at about 30 or maybe a little more seconds. It's going to depend because we're talking about 1.5 to 2.4 grams. That's going to differ a little bit sometimes based on the coffee you're using, various things like that, but this at least tells us how we could kind of break down how much coffee we would get in a grind cycle. 
There is a burr calibration system in the device, and this is of course going to make sure that the burrs are always properly calibrated to ensure that you get a good, smooth, and consistent grind. Okay, so after all those fancy words and other things, it's what you really want to know, right, which is how does it grind coffee? Um, so let's go ahead and show you. I'm just going to turn it on to start. The unit was in sleep mode, so this LCD screen on the front was turned off, but I just turned it on by pressing the button once, and then this lights up the backlit LCD, which is cool. I like the fact that it's backlit so that you can see what's going on. There's also a little light that comes right here in the, uh, the receptacle for your coffee grounds. So it, it looks really clean. It looks cool. I think it's going to look great on a countertop. Let's get some beans in this thing and see how it grinds. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and fill the bean hopper. It doesn't really matter how much coffee you put in there. And again, if you're using a good storage receptacle for your coffee beans, you don't actually want to keep a lot of beans in your hopper all the time because that means that they're not going to stay fresh. I prefer to add beans as needed when I'm going to be grinding. Um, but what's really going to be important here in our case is to, is to move uh, 28 notches up because if we move to 28, that's about what we're looking for for French press. So I'm going to go ahead and move up to 28. And this is easy to see. I could count it, but why would I do that? <laughs> because right here I've got 30 on the hash marks and I have one hash mark just before that, which is going to be 28. So there you go. Now I've set to my French, uh, my French press grind setting. And then my next step is to just choose how long I want to grind for. So this will, again, depend on how much coffee you want to grind. And this is where that information I was talking about earlier is useful. If you know roughly how much coffee you're going to grind per second, you can kind of do a little bit of math and figure out exactly how much you want. And this, of course, would also depend on how much coffee you're looking to make, because remember, you're going to need a certain amount of ground coffee to make a certain number of cups, or this may just depend on the strength that you want. There's a lot of different factors. I'm just going to go ahead and go to, let's say, 20 seconds. So this will actually round robin, and this is one thing I do like, because if you're turning, you'll notice I'm going in one second increments right now, but if I happen to go past 20. If I want to go back to it, it takes a little bit because this goes in tenth of a second increments. So it's actually just a little bit easier to just kind of round robin. Just kind of take my time, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and there's 20. And then if I happen to go above that, I could go back in uh, tenth of a second increments. So if you go over, you can kind of adjust up and down a little bit. I'm just going to go for a flat 20 and let's hit go and see what happens. So all I need to do is select how long I want to grind and then we're going to press this button in. Cool. So that's kind of cool. You can see as it counts down the whole time, so you know exactly how much time you have left. Uh, that was pretty quiet, I have to say, and it sounded consistent. It didn't sound like the motor was trying and going up and down, up and down, so it seemed really smooth. Let's see what we got from the grind here. All right, so first impression, one thing that's cool, there is not a bunch of extra ground grounds and dust everywhere, which is really nice. That tells me that the unit did grind very, uh, very efficiently, I think, because I've had a lot of times, a lot of other grinders where I take out my receptacle for my grinds and there's just coffee dust everywhere. So this tells me that's doing a good job. And let's see what we're looking at here. So this is what I just ground and this looks great for French press. This is perfect. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, that's, that's great. It's a really good consistency. The grind is very, very consistent. And if I was going to make French press with this, I think that this would work very, very well. Um, it, you could adjust this, obviously, if you needed to, to your liking. But we know, you know, roughly the setting that we need to use to be able to get a really good French press. And there's also a guide that comes with the Virtuoso Plus that will tell you what setting you should aim for in order to be able to get a good French press grind or an espresso grind or whatever you might be looking for. So that gives you a basic idea. Once you get to that, you can kind of adjust as needed, but this is great. It looks consistent. And this is, you know, of course, more than enough coffee for me to be able to make a really decent cup of French press coffee. So there you have it, everyone. That's the Barazza Virtuoso Plus uh, coffee grinder. And I told you this one would be a little long, but there were a decent number of things to cover here. And this is a cool upgrade to the previous Virtuoso. Um, my bottom line on this device, I think it's really cool. I definitely like the digital display and I like the ease of use. Um, I mentioned this in the unboxing video for this device. The previous Virtuoso had a knob on the side that I would kind of have to just grab and move. And I couldn't totally gauge how much time I was going to spend grinding. I just kind of had to turn and say, that's probably enough. But in this case, I can actually select the amount of time, which again, using a little bit of math, lets me also figure out exactly, for the most part, roughly 
how much coffee I'm going to grind. So I can be pretty specific, and this helps you, again, to have less waste, which is pretty important, get a really consistent grind, and get exactly what you're looking for. And, of course, the build quality is great. This is a nice, heavy device that's going to sit on your countertop. It looks great. I'm digging the lights that are on it. I like how smooth it is to use, and it's not very loud, so I don't think you're going to go waking up everybody in the house when you're using it, which is pretty nice. So, overall, a really great device. Now, if you want to add the Virtuoso Plus to your at-home coffee shop, how are you going to get it? You're going to go to frenchpresscoffee.com, where you can find it, along with all of the other materials that you need to have a great at-home coffee shop. Do you like that video? Give us a thumbs up. And while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on more highly caffeinated coffee videos. And if you subscribe, I'll give you a great coffee quote. Go on. I'll wait. Go on. Button's right in front of you. Ah. Thank you so much. And now for our quote. Retirement is one great big coffee break.